Start like this. I mean, you already started. It's already on. Mmm, I think. Maybe this. What's up, guys? <laughs> So twicky, bitch. <laughs> uh, I just had to like think up a fucking intro. Anyway, uh, I, if you saw my last video, you noticed that I just hit over a thousand miles. So I'm going to do a thousand mile review on my 2017 DRZ 400 SM. And I got a little surprise for you. The rice bear is back. One. Um, so anyway, get into the review couple of quick things uh i'm gonna start this out on all the cons of the bike uh just because i want to try and leave the video on a good note because I, I love this bike everything about it i love it so first thing is going over the display you can get aftermarket displays so the um stock display these if you're not used to having a brighter display at nighttime it's pretty direct uh your indicators for your neutral directionals high beam and temperature light never seen that one yet but your especially your high beam light it's a very very bright blue and your directionals are very bright green this exact same brightness of green here and at night with flashing leaving your high beams on it can get kind of blinding and if you have a visor that's dirty or foggy or has bugs in it it's going to glare uh so that is one con you can tape over it if you wanted to put some tape on the underside cut a you know a small pinhole in it though you get just the minor directional indicator or anything like that or high beam indication um no fuel gauge this tank does not have a uh, fuel level sending unit on it at all um clock is great i find that more useful than damn near anything on there uh Real good, quick, responsive miles per hour indicator. There's no lag whatsoever. Um, took me a little while to get used to the uh, trip meter, resetting it and all that, and how to adjust everything. Now I know you just double tap trip to get it on A, hit trip on this side again, and then hit trip one more time over here, and then it goes back to resetting it. So every time you refill your gas tank, you can do that to reset it, and I just kind of clock my mileage. Uh, range on this bike. You've got a 2.6 gallon fuel tank on here and You only get I'm getting about 95 miles Roughly that's you know, not much highway use over 70 miles an hour uh, City hardly affects it no matter how hard you're stopping and going taking off launching whatever you want to call it um, Doesn't really affect your mileage that much. It doesn't make it any poorer than what it is and honestly, it's pretty good you get about one and a half gallons out of it before it goes into reserve. Uh, I have left it on reserve before and forgot to flip it over to the on position, which is kind of easy to do because sitting up on top of the bike, you can't see this up under here, so you can't really tell where it's sitting at by just looking down. Um, however, I did notice that there will end up being some fuel sitting on this side. So if you hop off and you're not more than like maybe two miles away from the gas station, hop off the bike, take it, lean it over, put it back up. That tank will drip over the middle beam of your bike frame and go onto the uh, fuel petcock side. And that'll allow you to get maybe a couple bowls full of fuel in your carb. And it works pretty good. Uh, another complaint is the seat. I've read a couple of reviews, watched a couple of videos of some guys. They said that it gets softer it's gotten a little bit but nothing like what they said uh i'm also pretty light so i guess my weight isn't going to break it in as much the exhaust is nothing sporty uh it's very stock sounds it sounds like a thumper it's a one cylinder big thumper uh i love it the fans work great on it um the other con would be the brake pedal it just doesn't have i mean if it had a peg that went out maybe like that much farther it would be perfect i mean you want it probably about to the last quarter of your peg lined up that's 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 just my preference though um riding around normally you're not going to have any issues or anything like that but whenever you start popping wheelies and you want to like be able to use the back brake to keep from looping it's a little sketchy um cornering on this bike's awesome uh i'm not taking it to the track or anything like that 
I tried upgrading the headlight to a brighter halogen. It's it ended up being pointless. It was the exact same brightness as stock. Uh, there's no need to upgrade your high beams. Uh, I really like the directionals. The you know the reset button on it is a lot easier than that stupid ass toggle that flips out and you have to push the whole thing in. It it feels a lot more responsive. I don't like the fact that when it's in neutral, you can't start it without having to pull the clutch in at the same time. Um, it's kind of annoying. A lot of people have they said that they disconnected their uh, kickstand sensor right here. You follow it back up and you just loop it uh, to close the circuit. And they said that whenever they were coming down from a wheelie or coming off of a jump, it would kill the bike. Well, if your kickstand falls down all the way, you're landing way too hard. I have not had a single issue and I do wheelies every single time that I leave my damn driveway. So it's never once even hesitated on me. Uh, I don't use helmet locks. I just don't. I carry the helmet with me. The toolkit that it comes with, I don't have it in here. Uh, I generally keep my pistol in there. Whenever I'm just like cruising around downtown, uh, if I'm going back roading or something, I'll keep it on my hip. But uh, the toolkit that it comes with is very high quality, actually. Um, the tread on this bike uh, stock is pretty fucking good. I've done burnouts, wheelies, sliding into fucking, uh, you know, stop lines and lights and signs and shit and pulling up the line, just screeching that back wheel. And I haven't noticed any tread wear whatsoever, uh, vis visibly anyway. I haven't measured it with a tool or anything. Uh, they had a little quick charger plugged in the battery. And what I did was I went and bought one of these adapters that plug into a cigarette lighter port for a phone charger and that way I can use it for an emergency backup system and that's pretty much every single con that I can think of uh, some people say that this bothers you it, I'm I'm 6'2 it doesn't bother me at all I sit tall enough to where this doesn't get in my line of sight 6'2 um, you an ugly motherfucker you know that I barely got fabulous it. barely got in here alright and uh yeah anyway so i'm gonna be getting some more footage later me my mom her husband and my wife we're all gonna go and maybe me no you're not going Ending on a positive note, this bike is insanely fun to ride. It's a pretty good bike. I mean, even if you're not into supermotos, like if that's not your thing, and you just want to practice and you know a guy, a friend of yours or a family member that has a supermoto, I definitely recommend trying it out. Uh, it's a very light bike, easy to maneuver. You sit more upright uh, for me, even though I'm, especially if you're tall, because those little 250s that they rent you at the... Texas DMV or wherever state you're from to take your rider's test on, they're shitty. They're super low to the ground. They're a little awkward. You kind of look like a monkey fucking a football. Um, so when I sit on it, I can I can flat foot it. I can flat foot it with a little bit of bend in my knee. Not too much, just enough. Uh, another good thing that I really like about this bike is that it just looks sexy. I mean, it's a damn good riding bike. Uh, I haven't really done much modifications to the aesthetics other than I took the back strap off right here for the seat. Uh, it just kind of got in the way. It was a little pointless. You couldn't use it to help rotate the bike because it's just not a really good grab point. Um, if you want to like shove your gloves under it or something, you could, but you could also just put them in your little tool pouch here. Um, the gearing on it, uh, stock out the door, 
you can cruise 65, 70 all day long. Uh, 70, 75, you're starting to kind of get up in the revs. As soon as you start getting like the 80 point, you can do 105 on it. That seemed to be my max on it. I think somebody told me it's electronically limited at 115. Um, however, I've never been able to get that fast on it. Uh, if you're not sitting more up on the tank at 80 to 85, you will get a little bit of speed wobble. Uh, that also depends on how much you weigh. Uh, if you're a lighter guy like I am, you will get some minor speed wobble. It's nothing dangerous or anything like that. You could try loosening up your grip. I find that if I just either sit up on the tank more or lean forward more and put more weight on the handlebars, on the front wheel that is, uh, it ends up going away. Um, but even at those high speeds, you still have plenty of control. Uh, it runs pretty cold. And by cold, I mean not blisteringly hot. Like your fan's not screaming after getting off the highway or anything like that. It has very good uh, ventilation through the radiator. Oh yeah, another good thing that I really like about this bike is the customization capabilities of your your ride stiffness uh, you've got I, I love it just the way it is stock for me uh, it rides absolutely perfect not too soft not too firm the rebound isn't too quick the, the uh, compression isn't too quick you've got your adjustments here on the rear and I think you've also got another one on the bottom yeah right here on the rear and then this outer thing, this outer, uh, I think that's a 5 eighths or something like that. You can adjust it. I have no intentions of doing that. I started thumbing through the owner's manual and it was insanely complicated. Um, your compression, you can adjust here and your decompression is here on the bottom of your uh, fork. I keep dropping my fucking sunglasses. The rims look awesome. Everybody loves the rims. That's generally the first thing that people recognize as soon as I roll up, when it's clean. Uh, this past 4th of July is the last time I had it anywhere remotely off-road and it was muddy as shit. Uh, I really need to wash it. And if you're used to riding with a windscreen, I don't recommend this bike, unless you plan on putting a windscreen on it. If you're not used to riding with a windscreen, this is your first bike ever you're thinking about getting, I highly recommend this bike because then when you get a chance to be on a bike that has a windscreen, you appreciate it just that much more. Um, another thing, because it doesn't have a windscreen, get something with a face shield. Because at night, bugs flock to that headlight and they just, it, they'll buckshot your face if you're not careful. And it sucks. Uh, I dropped it. On, I didn't drop the bike. The bike dropped itself. I had it, uh, the kickstand down. It was on some soft turf, and it fell over on this side. Didn't hurt any of the paneling or anything. It just fell straight over, uh, partly because I didn't have the handlebars turned in this way. I had them turned out to angle at this target we were shooting at, and it bent this clutch lever. I'm planning on getting aftermarket clutch levers uh, just because I like the ergonomics and customization capabilities of the aftermarket but these work just fine and even with that hook in it I mean I only use these two fingers or just this one anyway so it works out no problem